Oh my god, is that is that signed by Wow. Tough. Hey everyone, I am here with Joe Stepanzi, aka Bearded Hardware, and we're gonna be lapping a Threadripper CPU. So that nice text that's on top of it that everyone gets all excited about seeing. Bye bye. We're gonna take it away. <laughs> uh, so this has functional purpose. It's to improve the. Well, I'll let you describe it. So we're gonna lap it for a reason. Why don't you go ahead and talk through it? If you look at them, they're they're kind of. Uh... I don't know, not as flat as they look. Yeah, some are concave, some are convex. Depends, yeah, you'll see that the they kind of flow. I mean, it will actually be see. You'll actually see it a lot more when we actually take the chip out and go through, and when you sand it and stuff. But a lot of these big chips, they're so, so like when they're getting soldered and everything, they kind of warp. So like we want to get it nice and flat so that the pot's flat. And then, flat. And the IHS is flat. IHS flat. We have some footage where. I worked with Kingpin previously. Actually, I'll, I'll talk about this more in a little bit. But you can see the high and the low spots as you sand. Yeah. And so that delta is what kind of dictates the stability and overclocking, stuff like that. So we're going to work on that today. We have a 3990X coming in on loan from another YouTuber whom I can't name, but you can take a guess who it is in the comments. And we're going to be streaming that probably on Sunday of this weekend. And when this video goes live, check uh, Twitter at GamersNexus for timelines on that. And then also, uh, probably I'll have a comment in the comment section below pinned to the top with the time we're going to stream. So that's the plan. But for this one, we're going to lap the CPU and the LN2 pot. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte's X570 Master Motherboard. The X570 Master is what we use for all of our Ryzen 3000 CPU reviews and for extreme overclocking streams with the 3900X. The Master is built to handle more current than you'll push through your Ryzen CPUs. It has actual finned heat sinks for the VRMs, and it features a massively overhauled Gigabyte BIOS. Pick up the X570 Master for your Ryzen 3000 CPU at the link in the description below. This is a 3970X. To be very clear today, we're lapping this one. The 3990X is in the mail on the way to us, so we can stream with it. But we want to try this process out first on the cheaper but still very expensive of the two chips and Joe has to do this anyway for his 3970X to improve some of his clocks and scores. This is what we're going to be doing today, just a quick teaser, but the reason we're bringing this part of the clip forward in the video is because we realized after seeing some comments on some tweets I did that a few people didn't quite get why we're doing this, so we should make that clear earlier on. So this isn't strictly for thermal improvement. And we're not working with an air cooler or a liquid cooler. No. So the reason for this is to improve contact and, as I understand it, decrease the risk or the severity of cracking of the paste mm -hmm. as you have big temperature changes when you bring the temperature all the way down, bring it back up. Joe, anything you want to add on why we're doing this? Because a lot of people didn't seem... We saw comments that were like, I've done that and there's not a big temperature difference. Well, That's not what it's about, though. It's you're, not really about... Well, the thing is, is you're testing... I'm talking about overclocking, so I want and to get with, more... with liquid nitrogen. Well, yeah. Even, yeah, but even on air, you'll get a little bit more. Yeah. Like, you'll get a little bit extra. Like, for instance, I did the, like I was saying before or whenever about the 9900K that I always talk about. Yeah. Basically, it went from a 5.2 R15 chip to a 5.3 R15 with chip. With lapping. Just lapping. And Only different. by the way, there is a difference in a lot of the testing. So when we did the 9980XE and some of the other chips, uh, it'll vary, but sometimes you'll see a big core-to-core -core delta change. So a lot of people who say there's no difference have no idea how to test a processor for thermals to begin with, yeah. and they're just looking at the CPU temperature number in the maximum column and hardware info after running it for maybe a few minutes. And really what you need to do is look at core-to-core -core deltas, because that will improve as you reduce the height delta from the different spots on the IHS. So there is an improvement. A lot of people test it improperly, and uh, even if you don't see an improvement in direct thermals, there is one in the mounting quality yeah. for extreme overclock or just overclocking in general. Yeah. So then the trick is we're trying to get the best possible. So yes. this is what you got to do. That's right. All right. So for what I was saying, we did a video previously with Vince, with Kane Pen, where he's, he's all fancy these days. He's got his sanding machine. His minion. Yeah. So he's got a just a spinning disk sander. And it helps him get, a, a I guess, a more perfect sand. But we worked on the 9980XE when I was with him. And uh, the biggest thing was, as we sanded it down, you could see towards the edges and the center, there were some spots that would show copper before. Yeah. That's how you can tell like, if it's con convex or if it's concave. Like, you can yeah. actually see it as you sand it. Because obviously, the, you'll see the copper will start being exposed on the sides. And that means it's going like dipping in like this. You know? 
Yeah. So if they if you're sanding it in the outside, basically it's it's getting copper. That means you have a big hole in the middle. <laughs> yeah. So if you still have nickel plating in the center, obviously it's not getting sanded off as fast yeah. as the other stuff. And uh, so you have to be careful of a few things like pressure. We'll talk about it, all that once we get set up. Yep. But the big takeaway here, first of all, uh, this almost certainly voids your warranty, but you could do it at home and it would, okay. have, would have actual potential benefit. This is the kind of thing you do for if you're interested in competitive OC or you just want to have a fun project. But it is possible to lap something poorly and end up with a less even surface. It's kind of hard to do, but it, it's possible. So yeah, I mean, uh, Joe will will help provide some guidance on that. If you want to follow on at home with maybe a less expensive chip or something and improve your thermals, uh, we are not lapping the 3990X. We're going to do is it a 3970. Yeah, this is a 32 so core. So it's just yeah. a just garbage basically. Oh, it's, it's only terrible. 32 it's cores. Only 32. It, yeah, we we have a, it's twice the cores. You know, I it's honest, half the cores. I was expecting more from you, honestly. What? Yeah. I was yeah. I was thinking maybe you'd get a better chip. Oh, well. so yeah. So we have to obviously take this apart. One of the, this socket is way different compared to the Intel socket. If you look at the uh, what is it, the LGA thirty, what is it, thirty six forty seven? I want to yeah, say yeah, thirty six forty seven. Like this mounting mechanism, you don't have this on Intel. Like th yeah, this is what I wish was on the Intel Xeon. Yeah, I don't think I touched any of the. Uh, I thought you would be prepared for this. What by undoing this? Next time I'll bring my own tools. You know, it's frowned upon in the airport. Printing tools? Printing yeah. Tools. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> oh, look at all that thermal paste. Yeah, thermal paste. That's the one thing, like, you literally need to. Is that start Cryonaut? With... Yeah. You, you actually got Cryonaut from Roman? <laughs> I can't get pots from. I can't get these things from Roman, but actually, technically, I didn't even get it from Roman, so. <laughs> yeah. I got it from uh, his friend. Yeah. His... Who knows how to ship things? What the hell are you doing? I really like do you know how to use that? I was just making sure. Get out of here. Oh, let's see. You're going to pull it up and all the pens will be just flat. Oh, no. <laughs> James can't. I forget how you do it because with the, um, is it, they go the opposite direction? Yeah. I always forget because of. Uh, it was just stuck because of all your Yeah, that's, shit what, in that's there. the problem. Holy crap. Hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just pull it out. I'm a little afraid of just dropping it. Ton no, of, a bucket of thermal paste into the socket. Actually, it was worse when I got it. Oh, what is that one? Oh, okay, these are. Don't drop the CPU in the socket. I've done. Ah! Now there's more thermal paste yeah. to add to the mat. Do you want to sign this? Let's sign this. Sign this. So this mat has been in. We don't use want to decrease the, the value. <laughs> we want to that increase the value. That would only be if I signed it. That's true. Although mine is on. Well, there. yeah, I was gonna say your signature is <laughs> right over there. Yeah, this mat's been on the live stream table for since we moved in, and this one's been in use for a while. So Joe's worked behind it the most with me, and there's like burn marks and there's thermal paste everywhere. Uh, so there's a mark right there. I was gonna get Joe to. I'm kind of disappointed. It should be burnt more. Yeah, we could do that. We could add more fire. You know, it is our anniversary, right? That's right. It is pretty close. Yeah. The one year anniversary. Of streaming. Of streaming. <laughs> Jeez. Let's see. I'll just do. You remember how to write? I know. Just like words. Hard. Nice. Should I put the one in there and be like the bower? The one? <laughs> we'll put a one in here because I'm number one. <laughs> oh, does he do that? No, he has the, it's the eight and everything. Yes. It's because he wants to be Because like it's a pack. B. Just eight pack. All right, let's let's do some work here. Yeah, we need so, to clean that off. Well, let so me you, ask for you can tool. Clean that. Let's do this. Let's do. <laughs> fuck you. Let's do tools for the job. Um, so yeah. lapping stuff. You want a flat surface, obviously. You yeah. said you prefer glass. Yeah, they say tempered glass is pretty much one of the closest you can get to flat. Flat. I don't have a glass table here, but you had an idea that I actually liked. Yes. Yeah, so I usually. Uh, I usually use what is it, a P3, so the yeah. Thermaltake P3 case. Uh, there's a glass, tempered glass uh, panel. Panel, I guess is you could say. Yeah. Well, for. it's kind of you a tabletop. Tell. Like you could flip it on the side, and you could use it as a table. I, then, you know, not just a panel. You know, you know, someone's more of an overclocker when they can't remember what cases are. 
Like build Zoid. I, I don't use cases. It, so. That's what he says too. <laughs> I don't use cases. Like. So yeah, we've got a we've got a room full of cases. Let me go grab a glass panel. Yeah. And while I do that, See, I guess mine's, mine's pretty nice though. I have a nice one that has my logo on it. The thermal well, that makes it less flat. Me. No, it's so, like got to be microns not if it's off, on the other right? Side. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I uh, want you. You want to grab some CRC or something? There's some on the shelf up there. Where is it? Why don't you buy this one? I tell you to buy the red one. He never does it. This is what happened with the when I dropped the AMD chip because we used this one and not my normal one. Ah! Right. We need paper towels now. Paper towels. Paper towels. Let's see. This is the fun part, the nice and messy part. See, what's nice about Intel or the Threadripper chips, you don't have little pins on the back. Look at that. So pretty. I found a use for the uh, Asus yeah. case that we've had. First, you take off the outer oh, section. We're, we're back to the cooking show. Come on. Back to Julia's house. house. That's tough. What else do you need? You need sandpaper. I've got that. Yes, we need different. To what grit do you like to use for this? Uh, well, usually we use the lowest grit to start off. This is not sponsored by Craftsman. We've got 400, uh, 600, 800, 1,000 here. I have some more. I have finer. I usually stop about 800 or 1,000. You stop 1, at? Stop uh, at I stop at really 1,000. Do you wet sand at all for this, or do you just? Oh, you can put a little bit of water in there. OK. Or you can just spit on it, yeah. Jesus, I spray myself in the eye. See this? That's controversial right there. I don't know how it got there. What? Look at there's a big mark. Can you oh, see yeah. it? Yeah, what the hell is that from? Yeah. Is it a chip or what? I don't know. Oh. But it made a nice mark in my. That invalidates that, all your results. Yeah, exactly. That's what sucks. I have to get well, I have a feeling I've seen these chips before and like Mitchell. they're literally like really bad. I have a feeling this thing will get a little bit. You see it, Andrew? It's right there. You want me to dig this rod into the IHS, see if we can expand it? Well, you can sand it, you know. <laughs> You're the one who's going to be sanding this, right? Right? No. Right? No, no. I'm just going to mail it to well, How do you think the, I got this to be so big and manly, right? By sanding CPUs? By sanding CPUs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got, I have up to 3,000 if you want that mirror finish. But let me ask you this. When, we did, when I did this thing with Vince, when we lapped the 9980XE, he said he likes to kind of scuff up the surface a little bit for some extra bite or grip. No. Do you like doing that too, or do you like a smoother finish? You stole that from me. Actually, yeah, it is. I used to okay. do that. Okay. No, no, no. The reason why my theory behind it is because you know, like you, you ever had a car? Like, are you in the cars? I at have all? had. I have owned cars. You, yes. You've owned cars. You ever paint a car? Like a lot of guys that paint cars, they usually like they have to, to touch scuff up. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. they like say you have a primer down, you basically scuff up the paint, yeah, so yeah. you have the paint to adhere. So it's the same theory with paste. Basically, if you can help the pot like adhere a little bit so better, is so bind. To, is it supposed to help prevent cracking of the paste when you're? That's basically what okay. it is. It's to try to limit cracking and to try to limit any air underneath. Right. Because it seems I my theory is is that it's more air getting underneath than it is like with the paste just losing, mm. just cracking. You know? Well, yeah, and I should I should note this too. What we're talking about here is dealing with extreme temperature change. So, yeah, it's like, like air getting in there or the mountain becoming bad is pretty common because you're going minus what 198 degrees Celsius, potentially up to 96. Yeah, is it 96? Is yeah, it's 196 to degrees Celsius is the max, and then potentially up to maybe when you're heating it up to fix like cold boot bugs, you might go minus 50 or maybe even zero if you're kind of yeah. at the end of your session or whatever. Yeah, so uh, there's a big de delta there, and that can impact things. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the the term crack comes from like literally like when you'd be running and all of a sudden you'd uh, we'd run a load on a system and it would be like you'd you'd almost see like you could feel like the how much load it's going and all of a sudden it would pop crack. Oh, you could hear it. You could actually hear it crack. Like it's not a, it's not a fun little crack. It, that's like a, oh man, I broke something crack. But so, nothing's actually broken, right? It's just the paste. Well, what happens is is uh, basically imagine not putting a cooler on your CPU oh, yeah. because the yeah, yeah, yeah. literally the the paste cracks and then there's that means there's no medium in between yeah. the two. So you're basically running an open chip with nothing on it. Woo, so pretty. Like me. 
Got to do that Linus face. Are we going to tape these down? Yeah, so usually okay. what I, I use is some type of duct tape. You want to start at 400? I think I have like, yes, a, we need 400. I think I have like an 80 grit. You usually with there. something this bad, like how much of a divot it is, yeah. like it's boring. I'm going to be sanding a lot, apparently. Yeah. This is, the, this is when you need minions, you know? What is this? Is this like the tiniest sandpaper ever? I, I would have brought more sandpaper. What is this? I think they have, have multiple to, next to each oh, other. I'm going to have to go like this. Um, we can go buy larger sandpaper if you want. If you're going to be... Uh, oh, I could probably use this. No. You no, I could this? probably do it, but it's going to be... So, so I usually do so it... So in an hour when they're closed and we can't go get it. Okay, just get the more... Get, buy sandpaper the right way. <laughs> Look at this little tiny sandpaper. Look at that. <laughs> you, just, you just go like this the whole time. Just spin in a circle. We stay on this side too, no, right? No, no! <laughs> okay, we had to go to an auto store to get this because the local hardware store didn't have sandpaper. Yeah. So, what do we got? where are we starting with, 220? Yeah, we're going to do 220. I got a big... I'm gonna, the, you see the divot. I'm gonna, yeah. Inside the CPU, so. Yeah, this should hopefully help get rid of that. And then yeah. I'm going to clean the socket while you do this. And you can walk us through some of the setup, the initial oh. steps for the sanding, like your technique. And then we'll time lapse some of it. You need tape. Go for Tapes it. Tapes first. So, what we're going to do is we basically tape it down, do all four corners. You want a good strong tape because if it comes up while you're, you're going to end up scratching the CPU the wrong way, and then you got to make it. You're gonna have to do more work, you know? And we're all about slacking here. Some of us, more than others. It's okay if Steve punches me in the face with the, <laughs> the light. With the light. What the hell? Hey, Joe. What kind of tape is this? Does this help? I'm trying to help you see the tape. Where? Right there? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it wonderfully. <sighs> I can't take him anywhere. <sighs> is this helping? No. Oh, no, no, no. What I need is uh, I need a black marker. What's that for to mark the uh I don't know. To be honest, it really doesn't work all that great. I just do it out of like repetitiveness. What? Plus it makes you do something because you slack too Wait, hard. Wait, but what, what is it for though? Uh just to kind of put on uh, marks on there, see what it's doing. The CPU is so massive. It looks tiny in my hand, of course, but <laughs> everything looks tiny in my hand. Oh man, that's just bad news. The Cut that out. When we have the right set, you want to, so just a note, you want to get the large sandpaper, so that, especially for this large of a CPU. Um, what I like to do is I like to do a figure eight motion. Um, it helps to even out the whole surface. And that's really what we want to do is we want to make the pot flat and we want to make the CPU flat. So that way when it bonds on there, when it gets, there's no air and it basically it's perfectly flat. You shouldn't be able to see that light. That's the whole point. Like, if you can see the light here, that means that there's something wrong. Like, so it's either like the pot's dipped or the CPU, the IHS is dipped. So, this is one of the easiest ways. So, if you have like a stock cooler and you want to kind of compare to see what it is, you can do this the the light technique. And you can do do it periodically when you want to check after you're sanding for a little while. I've actually I've seen one other person actually sand these and it. It looks like that most of them basically have a big, uh, I don't know, like divot in there or like a hole mm. where, where it's basically everything. Well, I guess we'll see. Specifically Threadripper. Yeah. So you just go into figure eight motion. And what I like to do is after a couple times, you pick it up, check it out. And you can actually see how it's scratching off. But for the first a little bit, I mean, you're not going to see much. But we can also add, you can also add some spray, wet it up a little bit. Do you want water? Yeah, this is fine. A lot of the times what, what happens is like when you're sanding it off, it just gets in there. So yeah. it's nice to like loosen it up. So we'll go. And you want to do it light. You don't have to do too much pressure. What are you doing over there? Getting the, the stuff don't, out of the socket. Don't quit your day job. Literally my day job. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, right? So what I do is I'll change like, so you saw me going like this. I'll change it and just keep going. I'll basically do a circle as I go. Just keep going like this. Do you want an 80? Huh? No, I don't know. This should be fine. Do you want an orbital sander? Yeah. 
Just sit it on top of it and rip That's what Vince it. does, right? Uh, <laughs> sort of. He's got his own machine. He's got his lapping machine. How long do you normally spend on this? Uh, when I start seeing the paper. It's more about the paper than anything. The paper. So, yeah, you see how, like, it wears down after a while? Uh -huh. You'll yeah, see yeah, where yeah. it kind of gets useless. useless. Oh, but, I mean, how long does it normally take you to lap a CPU uh, to where you want it? Um, depends on how bad the CPU is. So, scale of? Maybe, a couple, maybe an hour. An hour. Yeah, like, okay. you can see already, like, how All it's right, cleaning up bad. nicely. And yeah. you see, like, it really depends on, like, I want to take that out so how, it's nice uh, and flat. How about pressure? How do you apply pressure? Oh, just light. I, well, it depends on the CPU. I try to do, like, barely any pressure. Okay. Like, it so you're just dragging it on the surface? Just dragging on the surface, just a little pressure, and just periodically changing the motion. Do you, so, like this, so do you hold like this? the Yeah, okay. I was just yeah, I'll ask switch that. over. So you rotate the CPU every yeah. now and then? Yeah. That's just to make sure you don't accidentally bias to one side or the other? Yeah, basically it tries to even it out as much. I mean, you don't have to be exactly perfect with the figure eight either. Like, it's kind of... How many of these have you done? How many CPUs have you lapped, do you think? I've done a lot over the past, like, six years, seven years. Can we blur him out? Yeah. Get a little just fuzzy. Just his face. A fuzzy. You could tell, like, the... It is shiny. Yeah, and then the copper piece. So, like, you can tell the... What I, Essentially, what I want to do is get it all down to copper. Yeah. So that way I, and the reason why I want it down the copper is then I know it's completely even because that means all of the nickel plate is off. So that's how you know. So even if you put like a, a piece of sandpaper over here, like you're, you're still going to get that same effect. Yeah, see, look. So that's where what we're going for is that copper finish. Tiny, big. <laughs> Tiny, big. And this, I, I don't remember how long that took, but uh, it didn't take too long with the machine. It did have... Really, really large dips and like changes in height, like you're saying. Yeah, I do. So there was one specific spot that took forever to sand. These are down. notorious for it. Like you'll, we'll see as we go on that one. But these ones usually are like all over the place. Yeah. Every every one that I've done, I mean, I haven't tried my 10980 yet. But and to really emphasize a, a point here, before we probably switch over to time lapsing some stuff, um, this is not about as much removing. Uh, the, just the nickel plating. So it's not about copper being just strictly better at conduction. Oh, yeah. It's about flattening things out. That's really the goal. Yeah, and you're not just going to do this to the CPU. You need to do it to your cooler, too. Yeah. So, like, this could be really flat, and whatever you're cooling with, not so flat. And I, I'll note, too, for more mainstream standard consumer use, uh, Asetek coolers, for example, will have a, a slight... I think it's a concave. I always mix, mix up those. I know which ones they are, but I can't remember what a stack does. I think it's a concave. I've oh. written about it before. But they have a slight concave in the surface to match specifically with uh, Intel CPUs because that's when they were designed is when Intel was the only real thing. So you have to be careful with that, too, when you're deciding if you want to lap stuff or not. Okay, so what's before we kind of speed through some of this, What's going to be your process for when you move to the next grit? How are you deciding? Is it just going to be once it gets uh, the surfaces pretty smooth? Usually I want to kind of get it to that main point, like where I want to... I, I kind of want to go... Oh, some copper. Uh, high, yeah, it's going to start showing. What that means right there, this is the one way how you can really tell what's going on. And all of the AMD chips, by the way, are like this. Ryzen desktop too. It's, the corners are always the highest. Yeah, and what that means is basically if the copper is showing on the outside, that means it's not even touching the inside. So that means that these are high spots. So that means the inside is really, really low. So, yeah. so we want to do... I, I have a feeling that it's going to be really low or really high around here. And we need to even it all out. Right there. You see that one copper p mark? Uh, yeah, it was like a divot in it. I don't know what happened with it or how it got there. But it's like it went in my pot and <laughs> everything sucks. Well, yeah. You can actually see how bad like it was scratched in there. Yeah. Oh, you mean the divot? Yeah. Yeah, it's still there. But there's a bunch of little ones, too. I, I feel like I, I have a vent over. I didn't realize, but I have a vent and a fan right uh. over my table. So I think stuff, something like came out of it and went on yeah. there. That's the only thing that I can think of. Because I'll take the pot off and just leave it there. Yeah. But usually I wipe it down. I don't know.
All right, so uh, we finished everything here, and it took a couple hours, but basically, CPU is looking pretty good. Oh yeah, it's you so got your shiny. shades. Yeah, got your shades. Look how shiny it is! You might see a faint uh, Dr. Lisa Sue. She autographed it for us. Writing on there. Yeah, tonight. She was here earlier. Yeah, that's right. About 10 minutes ago. She left. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> for some reason, you wiped the signature off. Well, you, you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so That was a practice try. <laughs> <laughs> of what? You forging a signature? Pretty much. So we also, uh, we did do the LN2 pot. It looks pretty good now. It was nickel plated originally, obviously. So the outer edges, you can still see there's a bit of a height difference there, but uh, the CPU is going to fall within those lines, and it's still way better than it was. Yeah, that one. This one actually took a lot longer. It took forever. Highly disappointed in you, in you, Roman. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. By the way, if you guys didn't That's know, that's not a good way to get one. <laughs> oh, it is if it's Roman. <laughs> should probably oh, it is if it's, Yeah, it is if it's Roman. That's true. So uh, the Allen two pots looking good. That's looking good. If we put them together, you can feel like a bit of a suction when we pull them apart now. And that was not a thing before. So there's better contact. You can literally feel it. It's kind of like a, it's a weird feeling. It almost feels like it's like suctioning. And that just, it's because the, now the two surfaces are so flat. flat. Yeah. yeah. So that is an improvement. And uh, we're going to be good for overclocking and the stream. So we've got a stream pop up that'll come up on the stream in the beginning, or the, the video for this one in the beginning of the video. And you can get the date and time, but it's looking like we're going to do 1 p.m. on Sunday, which is, I think, the 9th. Okay, I'm getting a nod yes. It's going to be the 9th. I nice. trust I trust you, Andrew. <laughs> Sunday the 9th. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, check in for that. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Bearded Hardware on YouTube. Or you can check us on uh, Twitter for additional updates as we approach the stream. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.